A reading from John's Gospel. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. We speak responsibly verses from Psalm 2. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Why do the nations conspire? And the peoples plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance. The ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let's speak responsibly verses from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. 
Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions tearing their prey. Open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword. My precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. Let's speak responsibly verses from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh. When my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle, and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Let's sing the hymn, Seek Where You May to Find a Way. Oh, 
Let's sing the hymn, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle. of Jeremiah the prophet. All the splendor has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes are like deer that find no pasture. In weakness they have fled before the pursuer. In the days of her affliction and wandering, Jerusalem remembers all the treasures that were hers in days of old. When her people fell into enemy hands, there was no one to help her. Her enemies looked at her and laughed at her destruction. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, and so has become unclean. All who honored her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns away. Her filthiness clung to her skirts. She did not consider her future. Her fall was astounding. There was none to comfort her. Look, O Lord, on my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Return to the Lord your God. Let's sing the song of the liturgy known as Lamb of God. Take away the sin of the world. 
A reading from the Lamentations of Jeremiah the Prophet. The enemy laid hands on all her treasures. She saw pagan nations enter her sanctuary, those you had forbidden to enter your assembly. All her people groan as they search for bread. They barter their treasures for food to keep themselves alive. Look, O Lord, and consider, for I am despised. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look around and see. Is any suffering like my suffering that was inflicted on me? that the Lord brought on me in the day of his fierce anger. From on high he sent fire, sent it down into my bones. He spread a net for my feet and turned me back. He made me desolate, faint all the day long. My sins have been bound into a yoke. By his hands they were rope woven together. They have come upon my neck, and the Lord has sapped my strength. He has handed me over to those I cannot withstand. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The word of God for our devotion tonight is recorded for us in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. These are the words of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Perhaps you've had a difficult moment in your life where you were excited to finish that difficult task. Maybe it was something for work. Maybe it was something at school, a project, something where it just took every ounce of your effort, blood, sweat, and tears, but you got it done. And you could say, it's finished. There's sometimes a sense of accomplishment excitement and exhaustion that gets wrapped up in that statement it's finished i'm done i don't have to do this again perhaps you're in the middle of something like that right now when you're confined to your house unable to worship on good friday of all days and you're stuck alone maybe in your apartment and you just can't wait to say those words this quarantine is finished this virus is finished it's gone there might be some exhaustion in that statement, but there's also a little excitement to know that it's over. I always get that sense when I think of these words from Jesus. One of the last things he says, he says, it is finished. Granted, he is exhausted by this time. He's dying. He's finished his work. There's nothing left to be done. There's no more blood that has to be spilled he can finally say, it is finished. Notice how he takes that drink to clear his throat, probably, so that he can say it in a, such a loud voice so that everybody can hear him, including the Apostle John, who is sitting at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mother. It is finished, paid in full. I have done everything the Father has asked of me. But what did he finish? He finished the work to rescue people like you and me. How he said that this is kind of a roller coaster of emotion kind of day. On one hand, when we come to realize what Jesus had to go through, what he had to pay in order for me and you to be free from sin and death, it's a very sad thing that he had to die for us, to rescue us, because there was no other way. There was no other payment. Nothing else could be done Jesus had to give up his life. He was the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. But on the other hand, we're happy he did it. There's no way of getting around it. We're excited. We're happy because he went through hell, so we don't have to. That's kind of the roller coaster of emotion that this day always brings to me, and I'm sure to you as well. On one hand, we're terrified and sad, and, and it just wrenches our hearts to know Jesus had to go through such a drastic thing in order for us to be saved. And yet, we're also excited because he was punished in our place, and we will never, ever have to say those terrible words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But in these words, it is finished. There's also excitement. Jesus can say, 
to each one of us. You don't have to do a thing. I did it all. I paid your bill of sin in full. You are free. Free from the shackles of sin. Free from the threat of death. And that's what we're going to celebrate also in a couple days. Yeah, you'd be a little weird that we're not gathering together on Easter morning, yet the celebration continues. Jesus, when he said, it is finished, he meant it. So you don't have to wonder, oh, do I have to do more? Is God punishing me because of this, with this virus, because of some sin I have to do, make up for? Nope. It is finished. Is God going to hold back any of his love for me because of something I've done? That sin that bothers you? It is finished. Will God close the door to heaven to me because of how terrible I've been? Even in, when I'm, confined at home i don't always do what's right no it is finished there's nothing left to be done jesus is exhausted by this point but he wanted to make it very clear to those who are standing nearby to those who would read these words year after year he cleared his throat and he said with a loud voice it is finished there's nothing left to do. I did it all. And then he gave up his spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as difficult as this day is, no matter what you're going through, whether you're confined by yourself or just in a small group, remember these words. It is finished. There's nothing left to be done. Jesus has done it all. Amen. Let's sing the song, Holy is Your Name. Everlasting is
Let's sing the hymn, O dearest Lord, thy sacred head. sacred head with thorns was pierced for me oh pour thy blessing on my head that I may think for thee oh dearest Lord thy sacred hands with nails were pierced for me oh shed We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When we consider the great work that Jesus did for us on Good Friday, it makes us contemplate our own status before God, and we come to God in repentance. Let's look at a psalm of repentance, Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your unfailing love, According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered. On your altar. Let us pray. God most holy, look with mercy on this your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over into the hands of the wicked, and to suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Tremble, tremble. 